Good day, viewers, and welcome to the first episode of the Face of Repatriation. Throughout history, of course, we learned that the African was subjected to so many inhuman treatment, and over the years, it has been a call upon the Africans who have been in the diaspora to return home and reconnect with their roots. So, if you don't know, I'll let you be informed that this is actually happening. And today, I Gambia is starting with this first episode of the Face of Repatriation. And we are meeting with a lady who is born and brought up in the UK, but decided to come back to the homeland, the Gambia. Welcome, madam. Nagadev. Jamare. Good. Naka Subasi. Bangni. Wow. Okay, I'm glad you're already speaking Wolof. <laughs> yes, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> So, thank you for inviting me. Glad to have you. Um, this is important that um, you talk to people like us that have decided to return home um, because it's important to us. So thank you very much. It's much my pleasure. My name is Shakina Chinadu and as you said, I'm born and bred in the UK um, to Caribbean parents. So that's just where the boat dropped us off. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you look at my DNA, you look at my blood, you look at my lineage, I'm African. So that's first and foremost. African, via the Caribbean, via the UK, back to Africa. So, so it's a full circle. So the triangular slave trade took you through from Africa to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. to Europe. Now you also decided to come back to complete the journey that Absolutely. you started. Absolutely. More than your name and where you're from. What more can you tell us about yourself? Um, I'm a mother of three. Um, I'm a lawyer. I'm a holistic practitioner as well. Um, so that means I practice natural health, um, natural eating, natural products, everything to keep the African body healthy. Um, quality of life, longevity, mm -hmm. um, as you can see. My breakfast. Yeah. This is mango and banana this morning. Wow. With some other bits, spices, and things in there. So, these are the types of things that we need to keep us healthy as Africans. This is the type of food that we're used to. These are the type of things that grow in Africa mm -hmm. that our bodies are used to. So, it's good that we should continue to consume those things to keep us healthy. You know, the Western diet is contrary to our bodies and our DNA. Mm -hmm. But if we stay with the natural side of things, because we are part of nature. Nature is us and we are nature Maybe. as Africans. So we have to work with nature to ensure that, you know, we keep ourselves healthy and fit and, and long livers because we are special people. Oh yes we are. Nobody would doubt that. I, I hope you see here with me after the interview. <laughs> oh, doing the interview in fact. Uh, but, but let's get this right. You are born and brought up in the UK. Why do you decide that you should come back to Africa? Listen, the UK is not for us. It's not for us at all. You know, so I was born and bred there. So you would think that I'm very much accepted there 100% because I'm a citizen there, I'm born there, I resided there. I should be saying to you, it was a great experience, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. And it never will be because the people that run the UK will never accept us Africans as part of that corner of the world. Remember they call themselves the British Empire? Sure, sure. But we all know how that empire was formed. You know, they, won they went around the world raping and pillaging and colonizing and doing all manner of things to other people. Not just the Africans, but the Indians, the Chinese, anybody else that you can think of. So they, they have a nature that they think they're superior to other people, particularly the Africans. So this is why we had the history that we had with the empire, the so-called empire, but mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna give them that respect to call them an empire because the way their empire was got mm -hmm. is different to how our empires were formed. Yeah, they stole theirs, we formed ours naturally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we talk about the Mali, the Zimbabwe, the Songhai Empire, that was just African hi history naturally. Mm -hmm. we didn't, I've never heard of a story where the African has left the continent, gone somewhere else, subjugated people to uh, inhumane treatment, taken over their land, stole their resources. I've never heard of that in all the history that I've read. 
I've never heard of that. You know why? Because it never happened. You, you said you were born and brought up there, but you are not part of them and you will, shall nev you will never be part apart. Uh, what would you say to the argument that, that they have now realized that they have, got, they have gone through some historical blunder and now they're trying to rectify that? Can you not now still be fit into the society? Where are they rectifying it? I haven't seen it. I've not seen it. Look, I've been around since the mid-60s. My parents were around even before then. Mm -hmm. My parents went to the UK in 1960. There were signs on the, the doors of people where you went to rent. No blacks, no Irish, no dogs. Yes? This is what they were saying to people. It's too serious. No dogs. That's what they were saying. So they're equating you with, to dogs? With dogs. So this is in the 60s. So I came along in the mid-60s. I faced the same thing at school. You, you wog, you coon, where's your tail? Come, you come from the jungle, go back to Africa. My children came along in the 80s. And they still got the same message. It's not going to change. It's the same thing. You know, you know what? It may have changed slightly. It's more stealth now. Sometimes it's like, oh, did that really just happen? Because they've changed the way they say things now. So they may not say, where's your tail? You know, go back to Africa in so many words. But they will ask you other questions. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. I've always been asked, where are you from? So I'd say, oh, I'm from London. No, but where are you originally from? So you see the narrative. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm from London, so that means I'm from the UK. Mm -hmm. But they say, no, you're not from the UK. Where are your people originally from? So that tells me we don't accept you here as an English person. So there's no black Englishman? Well, no people, black, call black themselves, people call themselves black British, but you are not. Because they will always do things to remind you that you are not part of their system, whether it be in the school system, which is very white, the curriculum, mm -hmm. the workplace is very discriminatory, the court system, the police, every facet of institutional um, policies and practices in the UK is against the African person. And when I say the African, I'm encompassing all people who have skin color like me. How does the media portray Africa in, in, in the West? Not very well. Not very well at all. And if our people were to depend on the media, mm -hmm. they would never come home. You know, all they show Africa as a poor, desolate place with flies, children with swollen bellies. Come here, help the Africans, these poor, unfortunate souls. Give money, give charity, Red Cross, um, UNICEF, this, that, the other. I don't even know the names of them. They've been here in Africa for, I don't know how many years, maybe 50 years. Mm -hmm. What have these people done for Africa? How have they really helped Africa? We've been giving money to these people, giving clothes to these people to help the Africans. I don't see any improvements in terms of what they've done. Mm -hmm. you know. So the negativity that CNN, the BBC, all these types of programs or stations that show Africa, very, very negative. You know, we're always fighting, we're always warring with each other. We, you know, they don't show beautiful houses. They don't show talented Africans. Everything is desolation. So everything about Africa in the Western media is negativity. Is negative. And, and that you say nobody can depend on, on we them. We cannot too. depend on that. So we, Africans ourselves, have mm -hmm. to show the positivity of Africa ourselves. And we're not going to paint a rose-tinted garden because, yes, Africa does have some issues, but let us tell our own story. It's not for other people to tell it. Let us tell our story. You know they say, there's a saying, the hunt will always be glorified by the hunter until the lion tells his own story. Mm -hmm. We are the lions and we must tell our own story. We don't need anybody else to tell our story. We can speak, we can write, we can narrate. Fascinating. And now, tell us about the journey. How, how has it been for you to come back to, to Africa? Yeah, it's been wonderful. So I came here in 2005 with an organized trip. Mm -hmm. And um, when I saw Gambia, if you've ever been to the Caribbean, the Caribbean looks no different to Gambia. Really? Really, really, really no different. The same way you see some nice houses, some not so nice houses, mm -hmm. some nice roads, some not so nice roads. You know, you've got the cellars on the side of the road. It's exactly the same in the Caribbean. And of course, we see beautiful, menelated people mm -hmm. everywhere that we look. So it's the same thing. So when I came to Gambia and I saw that, 
I just thought, well, why am I going to retire in the Caribbean when I could come here? So I changed my plans immediately mm -hmm. and started a 12-year plan, uh, noting that the roots would have to be when my last child finished university and then I could leave. So that happened and I came to Gambia and here I am. So, you know, that journey has been a really interesting journey because I had to plan. Mm -hmm. I had to get my family uh, ready for me leaving. Mm -hmm. So make sure the children were okay before I could leave and they were settled and everything. And um, I moved here permanently. I've been coming for, you know, 15 years or so, backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. um, but permanently, 20, end of 2016, beginning of 2017, I packed up everything, moved to Gambia and I haven't been back. We welcome you to Thank Gandhi. you. Thank you. And now, how has the reception been? It's probably been, been, been received beautiful, by the people. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It really has been. It's been something that I expected, mm -hmm. um, but when you actually experience it, you really absorb it. And you know, the happiness that I feel here is just immense. You know, the sun, the people, the food, the pace of life. Mm -hmm. I've had no racism for nearly three years. That's brilliant. Because, you know, that's a stress on our people. That environment we've come from is very toxic. It's not good for our mental health. It's not good for our physical health. It's not good for our spiritual health. So for us to get out of there and come home mm -hmm. and experience what we need to experience as Africans, because remember, our history was interrupted. I shouldn't really have been born in the UK. If things didn't happen, <laughs> 500 years yes, ago, I, I would have been born right here because my ancestors were here. They weren't even in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They were here. So I was born in the UK by default, mm -hmm. but I'm back by choice. That's amazing. And now you're part of the African Diaspora Returnees Association. I am. Yeah, tell, tell us about, about, about this. Okay, so that's an association that we formed to help people navigate when they come home. Um, so that's a bridge between the West and Africa because mm -hmm. many people want to come home but they don't always know how to or even when they arrive here they're not sure about how they navigate around the system things like how do we open a bank account how do we buy land how do we build a house how do we buy a house all these sorts of things is important but also they might need support maybe you know their children need to go to school you know they need to you know set up businesses they may need to just talk to other diasporans to find out what has it been like for you just like you're asking me questions yeah, yeah. Other people ask us questions either as, as well. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it like? Um, is it safe here? What do I get for my money here? What can I buy here? All these sorts of questions. So we decided to form an association for two reasons. That's the first reason. Um, and we're also currently setting up a website so that people have that information to hand because we can't always link with people directly because mm -hmm. it's a lot of inquiries. Um, so we're forming a website at the moment. But the second arm of the association is about our citizenship here. Um, so you have to appreciate that when we come home, it's wonderful, we get the welcome, we can stay here and reside here, but what we really want is citizenship. What we really want is our birthright. I haven't got citizenship yet, none of us have yet, um, and that's what we're appealing for now. And if you get a citizenship, you're going to abandon the citizenship of UK and adopt Gambian citizenship? Well, let me, let me address that one because that's an important issue. Now that's something we have to negotiate with the Gambian government. Mm -hmm. But you know the way I see it? We are owed by the UK and that British passport is part of our reparations. They owe us. They could never ever repay us for what they did to us. Mm -hmm. We lost our names, our language, our culture, our history our very being when they took us away from these shores. Mm -hmm. So many of us were still walking around with the, the slave owners' names. Some of us are still worshiping under the slave owners' religion. Because remember, they would hold a Bible in one hand and the whip in the other hand mm -hmm. and tell us, you know, God said they must do this to us because we're heathen savages, we have no souls, we're not human. All these things they put into our psyche and we believe them because we had nothing else to depend on. They stripped us away from what we were. So someone like me, I changed all my names. I got rid of my European names and I adopted African names legally. Mm -hmm. I changed all my names. I said, why would I be walking around with a slave owner's names when I'm not a slave? 
The name they gave me is not my name. The Chinese have their name, the Indian have their name, the white man has their name, but the African, they want us to carry somebody else's name. That has a negative impact on our mental and spiritual psychology because we're walking around with names that have no meanings mm -hmm. towards our culture. So when I changed my names, I chose names that will be fitting to our culture. Mm -hmm. And I chose names around the African cult the continent, not just in one place, but from west to east to South Africa, so that I encompass the whole continent. Because I don't just see myself as a West African, I see myself as an African, African the whole continent, mm -hmm. not different places within it. So the citizenship, currently Gambia is rewriting the uh, constitution right sure, now. Sure. So I got to hear about it quite early on and um, contacted the Constitution Review Commission and um, asked them if I could come and give a presentation because they were asking for, in, in some of the issues section, mm -hmm. they were asking about citizenship, whether the seven-year citizenship for marriage is still applicable or whether the 15-year uh, citizenship for non-marriage, but you've been living in Gambia for a long time, is that still applicable? So I thought, well, those two issues are quite pertinent to us returnees mm -hmm. from the diaspora coming home. Um, so I was given a date, I went in, I gave a PowerPoint presentation, charting our journey from being Africans to being enslaved to returning home, mm -hmm. and all in between. And, you know, just to give the context of from here to here to here, and what we're doing here. So, you know, I um, told them that, you know, we are encouraging Africans to stay at home, not to go the back way. Mm -hmm. We are supporting through employment. We are supporting, say, children through schools. Whatever it might be, doesn't matter. Contributing towards the GDP of the country. Sure. Because we're banking here. You know, we're investing in the country. That's the word I was looking for. We are investing. And we are investing a lot of money mm -hmm. um, because there's a number of us here. And what we're doing, we're bringing our residual capital from the West and we're spending it here. It's not like some other communities here who come, they're making business here, but they're shipping the money back, back. to cool. their countries of origin. We are not doing that. Our money stays right here and helping to develop Gambia. So that was all given across in the presentation. Um, so what we're doing now, we are just waiting for the first draft to be written and I imagine that would go to the Assembly House, they would have to have a vote on that, but what I'm waiting for is to see if our issues are in there. Now what I asked them for, I said look, seven years married to a Gambian or 15 years if you're living here um, continuously, that really shouldn't apply to yeah, us. Yeah, because that is, that is hard and you were from here. So, Thank you. Like, like Ghana did, Ghana waived wave the uh, issue of citizenship for the returnees who want to... Some of them. Some of them. Yes. And now they, they're citizen. I think the same can apply here. Um, I think the same should apply here. And, you know, as I said, it's our birthright. So why I shouldn't have to marry or I shouldn't have to wait 15 years? That's very unfair for your African lineage that's returning home. Mm -hmm. It's not just somebody from somewhere. This is where I came from 500 years ago. So when I come home, I should be seen as an African and I should be welcomed home as an African with a passport, with voting, with everything that I need citizenship. So this is what I'm saying to them is that they should have a special clause in the um, constitution, a generational clause, because I don't expect my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, and, and, and others after me to have to come and stand in that forum and ask for citizenship again. Mm -hmm. This should be something generation where they say, we recognize our ancestors, the descendants of the enslaved, returning home, and we should welcome them with citizenships. We should welcome them as brothers and sisters that are returning, not people that have just, oh, well, I fancy going to Africa. These are people that if we tested their DNA, their DNA is the same as those Africans born on the continent. What message will you want to send across to fellow Africans in other parts of the world? In terms of what? 
in terms of coming home? Oh, okay. Um, I would say, have a plan B. Come and test Africa. Don't listen to the media. Come and see for yourself. As I said, if you don't tell your own story, you'll be led down any road. So come home, see for yourself. Come and see the beauty. Come and taste the beauty of Africa. And, you know, to my UK brothers and sisters, Brexit is going on right now. You don't know what plans they have. Boris is talking about a deal or no deal. But you know what? You don't know how that's going to affect the African. Whether it's Gambia, whether it's Ghana, whether it's Nigeria, I don't care where. But come and see the continent. Have a plan B. Because don't wait for them to kick you out. Walk out if you have to. But walk out knowing that you're going somewhere better. You're going to be appreciated. You're going to be accepted. So I would say come home. Come and invest in Africa. Come and help develop Africa. This is your home. This is your land. Come and claim what's yours. Your ancestors made a pathway for you. Come and see. Come and taste. And come and enjoy. I'm here. I'm enjoying. I'm tasted. And let me tell you something. I am 100% happy. Much happier than I was in the UK. And life is good here. Very, very good. So come home. Come and see. Thank you, Sakina. Life, you're in the smiling coast of Africa. Definitely. <laughs> and I <laughs> smile every day. <laughs> Most definitely. Thank you. It was good yeah, having you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.